In today's video, we'll be looking at how we can convert a list of dates that has crossing minutes and crossing, sorry, crossing hours and crossing days into a table with hour intervals. Let's have a closer look to see what I mean. Here, I have two cases where on the 21st of September, let's say a machine is running between the 54th minute, 22 seconds of 10 o'clock to 22, 55, 33. So for now, it is still within the same hour. But let's say right now, it is running in between 55, 33 to 11 p.m. 32 seconds. Here, we want to split it into two separate rows. The first row being from 55, 33 to 11 o'clock. And then the second row between 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock 32 seconds. That's for crossing hour case. Now, for the crossing day case, which is from the 21st to 22nd September, we want to also apply the same logic in crossing hour and split it by hours interval all the way until 19 or 7 o'clock 55 33. The tables that we see to the right right now has exactly accomplished that. So there are two cases of crossing hour here. This one from 55.33 to 11 o'clock. And then from 11 o'clock, it goes to the 32nd of 11 o'clock. For the crossing day case, which is from 21st to 22nd September, we see here that beginning from 23 or 11 p.m. 32, it goes until 12 a.m. of the second day. And then beginning from 12 a.m., it starts to have a single hour interval. 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. All the way until our last row here, 7 o'clock 55 to, oh, you see here, 8 o'clock. Now, my system time is 10.30. If I now refresh, my table we see here that it is giving me the right reading again by the hour so not only is it stopping at seven o'clock it is going all the way it is continuing to generate the table according to my system time to show me that my machine is stopped across this time uh, this hours interval. So that's an extra feature that we are going to add into our table. Okay, so that's enough explanation. Let's see how we can do that in, a, in an entirely new file. We are going to do it by using Power Query. To access your Power Query, simply click anywhere inside your current data set and go to the Data tab. In the Data tab, there's the option to click on from table slash range. Once I click on that, it will try to identify where your table is, the full size of it, and then asking you if your table has headers. Both of this information is correct in my case, so I'm just going to press on OK, which would then open up my Power Query editor. There are two concepts that is crucial to solve our problem at hand. The first one, is index column or the second one is list manipulation specifically we are going to manipulate our current column using list.generate let's first work with our index column to add an index column go to add column tab and click on index column you may notice to the right side of your index column selection there's a drop down we don't need to click the drop down in this case, just click on the red arrow here. In doing so, our index will begin from zero. Once we have the index column, we can then change our time to start time and generate a separate column called end time by moving every element up by one row into the new row. We can do that by going to our Add Column tab again and clicking on 
custom column. In our custom column, we are going to first rename our new column name to n time. For the and for the m time, there are three parts to our current formula. The first one is to call a table. In this case, my table is called rename columns. This is also the exact same as your applied steps to the right. In each applied steps, a table is generated. We can call that specific applied steps, like so, to call that table. And in my table, I will first use this symbol to specify the position, sorry, the, the position of the row that I want to bring into my new column. This specified position must be a number. Fortunately, we have added the index column, which gives us a number reference that we can use. I'm going to call the index column and then plus it by one. But we also, afterwards, we also need to specify which column we like to return in our new column. In this case, it's my start time column. So there are three parts, beginning with calling the table. Afterwards, we will call the index using a curly bracket. And then we use a square bracket to call the last element of our formula, which is the start time column that we want to return in our new column. Pressing on OK will now give us this end time column. Let's ignore the error first, but bring my end time forward to see if this is as we intended. We see that 1055 has indeed moved over to the side of 1054, while 1132 has indeed moved forward to the side of 1055. Now let's address this error. Instead of returning an error, I would instead like the error to be to be the local time of my current device. We can do that by modifying my Power Query formula, either double clicking on the Edit Custom or clicking on the gear icon. Here we are going to use a try otherwise statement. So you can write it like so. So this try otherwise is an error handling technique in Power Query. It will first ask the Power Query to try to run this formula. If this formula returns zero, otherwise uh, give, zero, give us this, this specific value that I have mentioned. We don't want it to return zero. Instead, I want it to return datetime.local now. This datetime.local now, we want to add a empty bracket at the end, like so. Okay, now my end time is instead my current system time. So that's on index column. If we do not need to establish the start time and end time in hours interval, it is already, this table is already sufficient for us to calculate the duration in between my end time as well as my start time with this simple formula. So now this custom column is already informing us the elapsed time in between the start time and the end time. But this is not what we intended, so we are going to continue with least manipulation. For the least manipulation, we'll use a few formulas. Let's see them in detail. So for the new column name, I'm going to call it start time formatted. Because we want to generate an even longer column with hours interval. The first formula, or rather the main formula that we use is called list.generate. List.generate would take the elements, sorry, list.generate generates a list. More specifically, it will take the initial value that you declare to be the first element inside your list and continue to add more element inside that list using this next function. This next function will manipulate that initial, that initial value 
and return it as your new value. As for this condition as function, because list.generate is a loop, we need a way to stop the loop. This condition as function is the condition by which we will stop the loop. Okay, now without going too much into explanation, we are instead going to explore list.generate in action. Okay, we'll use let and in to simplify our formula. So let for the first argument, which is our initial here, initial as function. Later, we'll also write condition. For the initial value, we want it to be the start time of every single row. So currently, for the first row, we want the start time to be uh, 21st of September, 10.54.22. For our second row, we want the list to have 10.55.33. And then for the third row, we want the list for that specific row to have 11 o'clock 32, still on the 21st September. And then for the last one, we want it to be 22nd September instead. So for the initial value, we want to call the start time of each individual uh, rows. To do that, we must first convert our column to a list. We can do that using the table.column formula. In the table.column formula, it asks for two things. The table that we want to call a column to convert into a list. So in this case, it's my, uh, sorry, my reordered columns. Hashtag, double quote, reordered columns. And then for the column as text, it simply is the column that you want to convert into a list. So in this case, it's start time. And we are going to close the bracket. But this formula only returns a list. We want the specific element inside that list. We've, we can ask for the specific element using this curly bracket, which allows us to pass an index inside, or rather the position of the element that we want to extract from the list. However, this cannot be a hard-coded number because no matter where, no matter which row my list is generated, it will always have these four elements. For the first row, we want to call the first element. For the second row, we want to call the second element. For the third row, we want to call the third element, so on and so forth. So I cannot hard code a number there like putting a one or two or three. I instead need a flexible or dynamic number. To do that, I, you may think that we can call the index column. Since the index column sees a different value across every single row, but we can't do that inside a initial argument, which is part of list.generate. We have to declare that number as a separate variable first. So in this case, I'm going to call a new variable called position. And for the position variable, we are going to call that index column. Add a comma so that we can continue to write new variable. And then the index that I will pass in will be position. Let me add a space so that it's easier to see. Now let's write our condition. The loop, the loop will keep going unless we have a condition to stop it. In this case, I want my condition to be the end time. So for the first row, continue to generate dates by adding one hour interval, one hour, increase by one hour interval, one hour interval, until the next generated time is greater than the end time or greater than or equals to the end time. In this way, let's say for the second example, it will generate from 10.55 and then to 11 o'clock. Then 11 o'clock, it will already stop generating because to generate 12 o'clock would already be larger than our end time. So for this one, we are going to write very similar formula as our initial argument, but instead we are going to call the value from the end time column. Now, let's start writing our list.generate formula. List.generate. Okay. 
first argument initial we can't just put in initial we have to add this symbol in first so that's the first part of our list.generate argument let's go to the second part in this case that's the condition so each each of the newly generated uh, element must be lesser than or equal to our condition or rather the condition element okay so we must write it this way uh, having the each and then an underscore to indicate uh, each element inside the list and then finally we we'll write the next as function which is how we are going to manipulate the values inside a list as it generates new value for this one we are going to ask it to add a single hour duration so each element must add by hashtag duration zero day one hour zero minute zero second now let's see what happens if we press an okay for this formula keep in mind this formula is not complete yet it is now generating a list and in, inside each list there's already a value if I expand this list now it seems to be giving me what I want but not exactly still so 54 until 55 that's correct 55 until 11 o'clock that's correct but for this one this should be 11 o'clock until 11.32 keep in mind we want hour interval so this 10.55 and then this 11.32 second should instead be 11.00.00 and then for this 11.32 it should then instead be 11.00.00 and then for its end time only then it should be 110032. So we need to modify our list.generate formula further. Now let's go to our added custom tool, which is our start time formatted. For this one, we cannot just write each increase by one hour interval since our initial formula is probably already at like at a certain time. We want it to be 110000. So for that, our each formula need to be a little bit more tedious. We are going to first use the datetime.from to generate that 11, 11, 11, 0, 0, 0, 0 date time. For the date, let's use uh, date.year from my end time. Yep, I believe it's the date from end time. So I have this formula here just so that I... Oh no, it, it doesn't need to be from end time. It's each single element. Right. So let's continue to write that part of the formula out. There's probably a way to simplify having to write this formula. But I haven't figured out that part yet. So this, um, this part you may simplify it. Okay, so I want the time dot hour instead for each of the element. Then want me to return zero zero, and then only add by one duration. Now, uh, now that we have closed, let's see what happens. expand it says six arguments oh okay maybe it's lose it's missing some records
Ah, okay, date time dot from. This should have a date time. So this should have a date time. And date time is generated like so. Date time dot from. Okay, let's see. Now, if I expand my list, it is now returning 1054 to 1055, 1055 to 1132, and then 11 to 1132. Okay, the start time is more or less correct. 55, 11, 11, 32, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The end time is a little bit problematic. No matter, we can now make use of the index column again. So let's add another index column and using the same concept that we previously used to generate this end time column, we will again regenerate the end time formatted column. So let's call our new column name as end time formatted and then here call the table first followed by our index which in this case I'll be referencing index 1 instead plus 1 and return start time column like so all right now let's bring our end time to the front and maybe I should delete my start time and end time so that we won't get confused. Also delete the index column now. Leave our custom as so. Okay. 54, 55. Correct. 55, 11. Correct. 11, 11, 32. Now, this is what we intend to have. However, we see here that there's a slight error. This error is because, whereas our previous end time formula has the try otherwise statement, our current one does not. So let's add a try otherwise over here. Try this formula. If it didn't work, then return for me date time dot local now. This part. Now instead of an error, it is giving me my current time. Okay. Um, we more or less have the table as we intended already. Now we just need to brush up a few things specifically here for the duration we'll call it duration minute instead and convert the duration to that of total minutes. But we don't want to use the duration at add column. Instead we want to go for transform column. Transform column would transform our existing column instead of adding a new one. So now this is the minute, but the minute is not connect, uh, returning the correct minute because for our added custom formula, it is taking, oops, sorry, maybe let, let me rename this. So this is lead, least generate. And then this one is custom column. added custom one. So this, this one is using end time minus by start time. We don't want that. So let's just delete this one and instead add a new uh, yeah. So I remove a few things that's not supposed to be removed. 
let's see Ah, the real column is here. Okay. This custom we also do not want. All right, let's remove the few things again. Index, index, move columns. And then taking my start and end time formatted, we will now generate our duration limit. End time formatted minus by the start time formatted. Converting this using the transform tab duration total minutes, we have gotten our duration by minute. Okay, let's go to our home and close and load this data in. And maybe reformat. Custom DD and sorry, DD slash apps. Now, what you may not know is let's say if I added new dates. Right, let me add it on top. Oops, let me add it over here. And maybe this one I will minus it by then. Or maybe I can just use this as my current example. So here I have a not allowed now values. If I now refresh my table, right. It is giving me the error. We cannot convert the value now to type logical. What does it mean by that? If we come back now to our formula, or rather our Power Query, we see here in our new tables, there's a bunch of null values. Let's go down the different steps and see when does the error start to occur. Over here in my list, it is now returning me an error. Because remember, our list dot generate uses plus one hour in plus one hour duration for the loop. This is not a date time. When you add an hour to it, it doesn't know what it is adding to, so it is unable to return anything. As the result, so the error occurred. What we we'll have to do is to come all the way at the very start, and before. This table starts to run the list.generate formula. We want to remove any empty values in the table, specifically at the time, time column. If we do that, we are able to reproduce a table that's not causing us any issue at all. If I now add new values, let's say still the 22nd of September, Instead of 7.55, let's call it 12.30, and the status is going to be running. Okay, let's go here, and then refresh our table. We couldn't pass the provided input as date time value. Let's see what happened. Okay, now it is returning for me error down here. Let's go a few steps up to see where the error starts to occur. So here in my start time, it is giving me an error already. That's likely because the data that I input over here is not considered as a date time. Yeah, it is unable to consider this as a date time. So let me maybe let me remove a few things first and refresh the table again. Still the same. Okay. Now 
Oh. Okay, I think I know why. So instead of twenty second, let me just write as uh, September. Okay, and then but like this, if I refresh now. Yep, it is able to pass the value in. Okay, so it is able to pass the value in like this. All right, so those are that's it for the video. Uh, I hope you learned something. Remember, it's using index column and list.generate to generate an hour interval table from this table to the current one that you see. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.